Alright guys, J.A. Prada Performance here. Um, probably a lot of you aren't going to be real impressed with this, but uh, I've had a fair amount of people ask uh, kind of about the process of how things are made. and uh, We do actually make some things in-house. We don't farm things out to China or anything like that. Uh, so today what I'm working on is this. This is the C6 High Pressure Forward Piston. And uh, these have been pretty popular lately. Um, I keep going, going out of stock on them. I don't really have time to make big batches of them, but it seems that as soon as I make them, they're almost all committed already. Uh, but anyways, we try to do the best we can here. Uh, I'm hoping this year, being 2025, my goal is to not be out of stock on stuff so often. Um, it's a goal. Don't know if it's an obtainable goal or not, but I'm uh, going to do my best. So uh, if you're in the market for this, if you're building a big boy C6 and going to run some high pressure, uh, it's a necessary piece. So I'm just going to quickly run through the steps here. There, I mean, it's just a, it's a simple round part, but there's a lot of steps involved in making it. Uh, so it's kind of time consuming. And, you know, I don't have, they have machines nowadays that could do this quicker, but, you know, you're talking machines that cost 200 grand and more, and uh, we don't have that kind of money. And I don't, you know, at this point in my life, I don't really want to get another massive uh, mortgage on a machine, you know. Kind of done with that. Kind of just making do with what we got. Uh, so, anyways, here's step one. So this is real simple, and this could be done on the lathe also, but kind of what I do here is I have my milling machine here, and then I put my lathe over here close to each other so I can kind of toggle back and forth and run both machines at the same time. Uh, so this here, this is just real simple. All this is going to do, I'll start this up. This is just going to mill a hole in the middle. And uh, no big deal, but we just got to have a hole in the center. Uh, so basically, this is step one, just putting the hole, no big deal. All right, so then we go over here, I got this ready to run, there's the piece in the chuck. So after that's cut, I come over here. Press start on this. So this will just come in and basically there's gonna be two sides of this. And uh, this is gonna do all the operations on side one. And it's aluminum, it's 6061. Uh, this is made out of a billet, obviously, and uh, it's good quality material. So these should, you know, pretty much last forever. So that's going to do its thing. I got a tool change. This machine, unfortunately, has a manual tool changer, which kind of sucks, but um, is what it is, you know. So I'm going to have a tool change coming up here in a second. So let me put you on hold, I'm going to do that. And then also on the mill I'm ready to set up for the next operation too. So uh, be right back, we'll show you this side completed. Alright so that's step two completed. And now what we got going on over here. This is step three. And all this is doing is putting the hole in and just milling these two slots. So that's the third step. Um, so I've got step two finished. I'm going to run the rest of these on step three. While that's going on, I'm going to set up for step four on the lathe.
So stay tuned for that. Back in a sec. Alright guys. Uh, here we go, step four. So that's in the chuck. Let's turn this on. This doesn't take very long. So you can see we're machined in the top side of the piston now. A lot quicker than I could do it on the manual machine, I'll give it that. Okay. Let's get ready for... Well, we'll take a look at it. Seeing it's done already. So there we go. So what's left to do is still the groove. We could do the groove now, but I like to do it at the end. Um, just because this is a manual tool changer and it's kind of a hassle. I kind of hate changing the tool, but um, anyways, so that's what that looks like. Let's get ready for step five. Uh, so give me a minute on that. Yeah, so I just also thought I'd mention that, uh, so I'm here shuttling between, I'm running both these machines at the same time, so, um, just shuttling back and forth here. So you guys wonder why I don't answer the phone anymore. It's just not possible. This is what I do. This is how my day is, uh, which is cool, I don't mind it, but you guys are getting mad at me for not answering the phone and stuff like that, uh, you gotta kinda cut me some slack. I got a lot of stuff to do. So hang on, we're gonna get to that step five, and uh, yeah, if any of you counterfeiters are watching this, don't bother replicating these because there's not enough money in it, I promise you. Uh, but we, you know, we don't mind doing them here. But I don't think it's a, uh, item you want to try to make hundreds of. You will be sitting on them for a very long time. Word of the wise. Alright guys, one second again. Let me, uh, get to step five. Okay, so, step five, I think. I kind of lost count. Uh, just doing the uh, engraving on it, not really necessary for performance, but just a vanity thing, uh, made and designed here, so we put our name on it, um, I don't know, alright, we're getting close to the end here, let me get ready for step six, and, um, Talking about China and stuff reminded me of a little story, so uh, we'll do story time. How's that? I know you guys love that. And um, I don't mean to be picking on the Chinese. I like the Chinese people. I don't know how I feel about the Chinese government, but um, all right, stay tuned. We'll go over that in a bit. All right, so step six, I think. And all this is going to do is just cut the O-ring groove on the outside, or technically it's a, a lip seal that goes in there. Alright, let's get that started. I promised a little story, didn't I? Alright, let's get this going. This isn't very interesting. Uh, so anyways, I was listening to this interview with a, um, like a Chinese-American woman, and so she went to China to visit, and the story's just kind of disturbing to me. Uh, so she sees this crippled kid 
begging for money. So she's like, oh my God, you know, well, look at this kid, you know, this child is mutilated, hurt, um, all these things. And so she wants to give this child some money. And her mother says, no, don't. He's like, why? What do you mean? Well, apparently what happens is these children get abducted into these gangs and these gangs will cripple the child and then what they do is they take the child and put it in a tourist area and have the child beg for money. And, you know, of course, a child doesn't get the money. The gang does, you know, so... And, you know, they malnourish him and things like that and make him look even more pathetic than they are. Um, I just found that very disturbing. And, you know, the reason I think about this or maybe even brought it up is that, you know, there's a lot of things I don't like sometimes that go on in my country, uh, especially in the last four years or so. But I gotta be honest, I'm real happy to be here in America, and I feel very fortunate for everything that I have in my life, and, you know, even though life might not go the way you want it to sometimes, or, you know, whatever, you don't like your government, or your neighbor, you know, whatever it is, when I see a story like, or hear a story like that, I realize just how lucky we are, you know, to be here, and uh, especially if you guys are like me, and if you're watching this video, you probably are, you're building up some sort of a hot rod, or whatever it is, monster truck, classic car, dragster, you know, all these things, and I just, once in a while, I like to just sit back and realize just how fortunate I am, and uh, that I was never, you know, a victim of a gang like that that's so ruthless and just, I, I just can't even believe there's people in the world that exist like that. So, you know, when we, you know, kind of pick on Chinese manufacturing and things like that, it, it's never, it's never a slam against the people that are doing the work. It's just, might be a slam against the people that are ordering the work and not treating them fairly. Um, just another thing to think about, you know. We've got the money to buy, you know, good stuff from countries that are not abusing people. You know, and America is not the only good country out there. If you want to say it's a good country, I do. I, I think it's a great country, but um, I don't know, you know, I'm just... Every time I see something like this, I'm inspired to make sure that my money doesn't go to the hands of people that just abuse others. Uh, so anyways, I don't know, just a, just a little story I wanted to share. Uh, I just found it really troubling and I just, you know, sometimes stay in my bubble here and I don't realize what other people go through. So, uh, you know, I feel silly complaining about anything when you hear something like that, but... Okay, uh, we're almost done here. Uh, one more second, I'll just show you how I finish these off. You've already seen the interesting stuff, and you heard a great story. So, not a great story, but uh, let's say an important story. So give me one second, we'll wrap up. All right, guys. Um so all that's left to do, there's a burr in here, and then this hole, I gotta drill a very small diameter hole to, to go through the piston, this is an air bleed, and um, this, is, uh, this is just deburred by hand, actually this one still needs a groove gut in it, I put it in the wrong stack, but Anyways, uh, so that's about it, and they just, you know, got to be washed and all that, and clearance is double-checked and that sort of thing. So, alright, thanks for watching this, and, you know, some people have asked, they wanted to see some, you know, some of the manufacturing process of 
some of the things that we do here. So uh, this may not be interesting to some of you, but some of you really don't know how this works. Uh, so you can see these are, they're kind of a lot of work. Um, it looks easy when I, you know, pause the video and, you know, do stuff in between, but uh, they are time consuming. That's why they're a bit pricey making them like this. It's just, it's low production stuff, so it's not something we make hundreds of, you know, they don't sell that well. And if you don't know what this is, I did a video on it, and I I think it's something about building the C6 for high pressure or something like that. Uh, it's a high pressure forward piston. There is a video that explains what this does and how it works. And I also do these for the C4. Uh, the process is very similar, pretty much the same. Uh, so I don't really need to show you that, but... Okay, uh, thanks for watching, and uh, again, you know, just uh, let's all be thankful today for what we have and the advantages that we have in this country, or maybe the advantages that you have in your country. I know we have some foreign listeners, you know, whether you're in Australia or Sweden or Germany or, you know, anywhere in the United Kingdom. Uh, any of these places we get some viewers, so uh, just a shout out to you guys and your great countries as well. And uh, Okay guys, we'll see you in another video.